Now, there's a person named Billy Graham, and I used to talk about him a lot of times, and I still do at DE. But he was a, one of our most dedicated ministers in 25 or 30 years ago. In fact, he came to the DE meeting way back when we had 10 or 15 people there. He was at a seminar out at the airport. Well, he heard about us in chiropractic, and he came over, and he made a brief talk. What a dynamic person. But his history is that he wasn't a Christian in the beginning. He had to come to that conclusion, come to that understanding. And I'm not talking about your religion. I'm talking about being dedicated to the principles of what we're about, and then we'll have a magic ingredient that made Graham successful in Christianity that can make you successful in chiropractic. The story goes, and it's true, and I re recall reading it in Look Magazine years ago, that Graham was failing in his ministry. He was a great talker, and everyone looked upon him as a levator. He was going to bring out this whole message to Christianity. He went to California, and it was such a staggering failure. His whole program was so down he couldn't get anybody to come. Nothing worked right. His messages were received with nothing. His altar call, nobody came. And he was just baffled. And all of his admirers and his staff and the ministers that had supported him out there wondered what was wrong with him, what was happening to him. Why couldn't he attract people? Well, according to his own words, he was on the golf course one day. And he was uh, just observing out into the beautiful panoramic scene of how a golf course is, and a leaf. He was thinking and, and probably contemplating, what's wrong with me? Why are my messages not being received like we in chiropractic? Why can't I have a big practice in chiropractic? What's wrong with me if I can only do 100 visits a week just barely being able to make my payments or my loan payments? What's wrong with me? I think that's a reasonable, responsible question. Now, we talked about it a lot this morning, about how to make this presentation. And as Graham was distracted by the leaf, he realized one essential thing that, and according to his words, I realized that I had not yet accepted the Scriptures in full faith, and that was what was wrong with my ministry, that I couldn't talk with absolute authority. Now, we spent a great deal of time this morning, in fact, three hours, talking about that one subject, how to accept chiropractic in full faith and come forth with dynamic, positive answers that had assurance from within each individual. Every individual has this potential, has this quality to do it. That's what changed Billy Graham's outlook on his ministry. That's what saved his ministry because he finally came to grips with the acceptance of total, total authority for his concepts and his beliefs, that which he was projecting forward as the Christian faith. That doesn't say that there aren't others who have a differing version, but in his own self, in his own being, in your own self, in your own being, you don't talk from doubt. You talk from absolute authority. And you learn how to say those basic words. I have found what I believe to be the basic, the fundamental, underlying cause of all or nearly all of your condition. It's in your spine, and it can be corrected right here in this room. Those are magic words, if you've got the power just to say it. I have found what I believe to be the basic, the fundamental, the underlying cause of all or nearly all of your health problems. It's in the spine, right here in these x-ray pictures. I can show it to you. And it can be corrected right here in this clinic. Now, suppose you are telling these people with absolute authority. As Bruce Valentine, and I was talking to the story about Bruce Valentine selling the vacuum swing, a man that could not look at you in the eye, but he had a magic in his ability to sell a vacuum sweeper an inanimate object and a nearly in low class into low class neighborhoods would come in and ask people and then the quality of the voice when they would say, oh no, I don't want you to come in, but there was something about his voice that I want to show you a machine that will save you years and years of suffering and deprivation. 
Are you, do you want to see it? And almost inevitably, these people would say yes to this persuasive man. We hear a lot about talking to people in there, looking at them in their eyes. Bruce Valentine, one of the greatest salesmen I've ever known, and we're talking about salesmanship. We're speaking about a chiropractor selling himself and selling his chiropractic services with the feeling, the transmission of him to the people, the authority that he speaks about, the authority that, he, that it is his understanding. When he comes out and starts explaining chiropractic, the words must ring true. They can't just be simple words. You can just memorize it, start babbling it out. Anybody can do that. This is the separation between the big people, the successful people that endure in chiropractic. I have found, and you say it with total authority, what I believe to be the basic, the fundamental, the underlying cause of all or nearly all of your health problems. It's in your spine. And you learn to say that by saying it thousands of times, tens of thousands of times. You wake up saying it in the morning. You go to church with it on Sunday morning. You return home with it. You talk, think, act, behave. I have found what I believe until it rings absolutely and totally true. And when you present it to someone, like the vacuum sweeper salesman, to the person who has no money, maybe she has $10. And this man comes in and said, are you aware in, in, in a loving authority? Ask a question. To a strange person, are you aware that there are nine disease-carrying bacteria in household dirt? Can you imagine the quality of a person's voice whom he doesn't know, the customer doesn't know about it, the customer is not thinking about it, but the, doc, but the man, the salesman says, are you aware that there are nine disease-carrying bacteria in household dirt? And have it to the point of acceptance that they readily open up and say, no, I'm not aware of it. And then this same person goes about showing his equipment. He goes about, takes the covers back on a bed. He turns on the vacuum sweeper. He has a black cloth on it. He uses the, the, the black cloth at the end of the device that sucks the material out of the bed. He runs it over the bed, pulls it back, and shows it the black. And here's the smegalama-looking material there. He asks them to feel it. Then he asks a critical question. If you could get a machine for as little as $10 a month that would remove all this household dirt from your home, would you buy it? Now, let me tell you, at that point, this man here was a genius. I, I observed him on 12 or 13 times. At the minimum of 10 periods, everyone said, yes, yes, I would buy it. He immediately turned to his book. No other conversation. There was no dialogue or nothing. He asked the question in the right authority with love, dedication, conviction, Asked it to the potential customer. The customer agreed with it on all of these times. Now, this was a national champion salesman. This is the quality that all national championship salesmen have. This is the quality that all of the big practitioners that you hear about and you read about, they all have this quality. They have this quality in their voice that something is transmitted. What the people hear, they believe it. It's a believable quality. I have found what I believe to be the basic, the fundamental, the underlying cause or nearly all of your entire health problems. It's in your spine, and it can be corrected right here. That's the magic. Through thousands of repetitions times or through automatic mechanisms to begin with, because success comes in many packages and many faces, all of them. Billy Graham, Bruce Valentine, to give that authority. And there can be no better presenter than you. It just takes thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of just repeating simple things. In my own experience that I was talking this morning about these in, in this cooking utensil business, I was a failure in vacuum sweepers. I got into cooking utensils. 
because Dr. Nell sold two sets. My, my mind, like any other chauvinist pig would be, well, if she can sell two sets, I can sell a dozen sets. So Dr. Umber and I got out of the vacuum sweeper business. We got into the, uh, into the cooking utensil business, and guess what? Same as it was. Because we were dealing from the same base. No authority, no love, no dedication, no revelation, no knowledge of what it took to make a sale. Until one afternoon in Galva, Illinois, as an example, after an hour and a half presentation to a young woman with her mother there, with her parent there, the other parent there, all being negative about it. We don't want this cooking utensil. We don't want this cooking utensil. I'd been on the clothes, and a lot of times if you're in sales work, you make the demonstration for an hour and a half or an hour, then you start closing. That might take an hour and a half if you don't have, have the real message. You've got to have all the jargon to talk back and forth and answer all the objections without them finally saying no, because most people don't have the courage and won't have the knowledge or the strength to stand up and say, listen, we don't need any cooking utensil. We are not going to buy any cooking utensil. So there's the door. We want you to get out. Very, 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 very seldom do people exercise their full authority. Very seldom do they say that. Well, it was one of those days that, that I don't know why I was so persistent at this time, but I can tell you this, I did not have the love for the cooking utensil. I did not have the authority for the cooking utensil. Of course I knew the script. Of course I knew all the words, like many of us. We've got all the words, but we don't have the magic authoritative quality that makes people buy. We simply don't practice it enough. I have found what I believe to be the basic, the fundamental, cause of your condition. It's in your spine, and it can be corrected right here. When you can commit to short phrases like this with absolute authority and love built in the process, everything begins to change. When I had that transition in that small city there, it was like something had just swept away with my mind. I had not given all these authoritative statements. I didn't make any presentation. I was nearly begging and nearly presenting and, and repetitiously going through material. Then all of a sudden, I began to experience the transition. Love came into me for the cooking utensil. And then I began to love it. It became close to me. I became close to it. And the mother said, dear, I like the big set. The mother was the first one to see it. And then the daughter said, well, mother, I like the middle size set. Then the mother said, I'll buy both of us. And I was baffled. I was blown away by the whole conversation. I began to write up the order. And I began to take this routine. And I got, I remember I wiped out all the other extraneous things that I said. I, Your name is so-and-so and so-and-so. You're at this address. You're going to pay she said $25 for each set. That was $225. That's $50. I put the pencil in the right place. I put it on the pad. I turned it. She picked it up as it rolled down. And I turned to the mark I had on the paper. I said, press hard. That's three copies. Well, that was the beginning of two years of uh, total dedication, two years to what I might say is in, in a terms of self-hypnosis, I couldn't think left or right. I could only think and verbalize these contacts. I became magic on the street corner. I could go down on the street corner with a wear of a cooking utensil. All the policemen in Davenport and Rock Island and Moline began to know me because I would get up and talk to them, tell them about the cooking utensil, tell them about it in a certain way that they would even testify about it. And people, I would line them up. I'd say, I will come out and give you a demonstration. I said it with absolute love, consideration, and authority, and not thousands of people would be uh, open to us, maybe 15 or 20 in a day. We'd pick out the five best prospects that we thought, and nearly every person that we would present with to get in this right attitude, this right mood, this right persuasiveness, that we did it. 
And I had someone to drive me around because I noticed that I was driving and making decisions. I could feel this thing drift away from me. When I would begin talking extraneously about something else, I could feel this, the strength of the authority loosen itself in me. Then we left this particular town that I mentioned a while ago. I, and someone, Bob Carver, I believe, was, asked me, he said, what happened? So we heard these people change for an hour and a half. They were objecting to you. Now, all of a sudden, everybody starts buying, and everybody starts being happy, and everybody wants to know, can they help you make the distribution of that? I said, why did it happen? I said, I can't answer that question. I said, just take me to the next house down by the river in Moline, Illinois. Well, we went to this uh, desperate-looking house that backed up to the Mississippi River. We couldn't get anybody to answer at the front door. We noticed it was a dilapidated house. And the guy said, we're not going to sell a uh, set of cooking utensils here. My dynamic, positive mind, I said, we'll see. I had no doubt of thinking. I only was a transmitter. I was an instrument of this thing. We found the woman out back. Maybe she was 30. 32 or 33 years old, I made the presentation. She said, I am not buying any cooking utensils. I am not building any hope chest. I said it with absolute authority. I said, I don't, I'm, I'm not concerned about whether you buy it or not. Let me present it to you because I'm working my way through the farmer school in Davenport, Iowa. She said, okay, I will let you present it to me, but I will not buy. We went through the house. There was a drunk person lying on the couch, and she made a few comments about him. My cohort that was with me had put the case out on the front porch. I went out, and I had the, uh, a little saucepan under my uh, arm, and I had the sales book. I went out and sat on the, the uh, case. I said, I'm from the wear of a cooking utensil company. With love. The same loving tenderness and concern that I'd had earlier in the day. I could hardly verbalize it. And the girl said, I told you I didn't want anything, but your presentation and the beauty of this cooking utensil unit here brings back the memories of myself. I want a set of wherever cooking utensils. I'm 33 years old. I'm certainly not building a hope chest, but I want to buy these utensils, these cooking utensils. I pulled out the pad. I said, your name is Mary Cole Smith. She said, yes, so-and-so. This is 1369 Barclay Circle. She said, yes. I said, now you want the small set, the middle-sized set, or the large set? She said, I want the middle-sized set at $126. I said, do you have the down payment? How much is it? I said, $20. She said, yes, I'll pay the $20. I wrote the contract out with her name, put the cross up there, put the pen in her hand. She picked it up and said, I really love and appreciate you for coming out here. I have always wanted a set of cooking utensils. Since that day, in all of the encounters that I had, being led around, being pushed and nudged into doing materialistic things, but with this dynamic power, available that I discovered accidentally inside of myself that Bruce Valentine brought to the table in selling uh, vacuum sweepers, that all of the salesmen, all of the great surgeons, all of the great doctors, all of the great activists, all of the great presenters anywhere have somehow found this magic touch through persistent effort, persistent effort, persistent effort, trying, attempting, trying and failing, attempting, persistency, 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 accepting this thing. If you want to be really successful, that's the road that you take. You must have a made-up mind on chiropractic, all of its theories and all of its principles. It isn't like making up a mind and you know it's absolutely true. It's just constantly repeating, repeating, practice, practice, practice. Practice, 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 practice. Constantly on your sales plan. And then, like magic, at an off moment, you begin to understand it.